everyone, Alexa Dunn here, and today I am going to be sharing both my favorite and my least favorite thriller twists. These aren't going to be specific, don't worry, I won't be spoiling any books. These are like general twist tropes that you see in a lot of different thrillers. And I have some that I really, really love, like it's like, oh, it'll make an ending for me. And then I have some that I really, really don't love that can certainly ruin a book or at least make me like it a little bit less. I'm going to start with my favorites and then I will get into my least favorites. Yes, I'm gonna make you wait for the juicy stuff. On this subject, I tend to lean more towards the positive, so I actually have 10 favorites and 8 least favorites. So starting with my favorites in no particular order, the first thing I love in thrillers, the twist that I love is the secret sociopath. I love getting to the end of the book and being like, oh, that guy was a sociopath, or girl, or person was a sociopath the whole time. And then you're thinking about the book and when it's done well, of all of the clues and foreshadowing that were there. And maybe it's the character that you did feel off about. I just love kind of that motivation and reasoning behind something really twisted being in the book. Secret sociopaths. The second twist I really love in thrillers, I know this one is not one that everyone loves, but it often works for me. And that is person who you thought was dead isn't actually dead. I like this twist as it tends to subvert your expectations, especially when the person who it turns out isn't dead is either the main victim or one of the other victims. So the third twist that I really, really like that there's an asterisk next to it is when the POV character or a POV character is a narcissist or a sociopath. I'm always really impressed when an author pulls it off, does it well. The most famous example, which I feel safe quote unquote spoiling because it's so widely out there, it's famous for this reason, is Gone Girl. That's definitely one of the best examples. The reason there's an asterisk is it depends. Sometimes you'll read one and it's so uncomfortable being in that POV because it's well done that it can actually be a slightly uncomfortable reading experience. So it also partly depends on when the twist comes in and honestly how good the author is at it. I did read two books last year that had narcissist POVs that were pretty uncomfortable to read. I knew what I was reading and I was like all in for it, but they were hard to read because when you do it right, it's not a fun POV to be in, but I still am very impressed when it's pulled off well and I like it. So the fourth twist I really like in thrillers, also with an asterisk, is POV narrative trickery. This is when you're reading a book, it's usually multi-POV, and midway through the book or two-thirds of the book, it's one of the twists. Often it is earlier in the book because it is hard to pull this off for a really long stretch of time, but midway through you find out that the POV that you were reading and you thought it was one thing is really something else. And when this is pulled off well, it is one of my favorite thriller twists slash tropes. There's an asterisk we're gonna talk about in the least favorites though. So the fifth thriller twist I really, really love is that one where a character who has been part of the narrative you find out is actually a person from the main character's past who they, there was something dark in the past and the main character wouldn't remember who they are anymore. This happens a lot in kind of small town secrets books and they reveal themselves during the dramatic twist to really be X, Y, Z from school or what have you, who you did wrong and I've been earning your trust this whole time. I really like those twists because it messes with us as well because we trusted that character and we think, oh, is there someone from my past who could do this to me? It's just a really fun twist. So the sixth twist that I really like in thrillers, I mean, I guess all of these are hard to do well, but I think this one's particularly tricky, but when it is done well, and that is the justified bad guy. This is the twist where you find out the thing, and sometimes this is when the POV character themselves are that person, but it could even be a case where it is a third party, but they do their villain monologue or what have you, or you find out why they did something, especially in books where you find out how bad the victim is, and you almost go, 
I'm kind of on their side and what's really fun is when those books do that and the person actually gets away with it. It's a very specific trope and twist. It doesn't work in every thriller, but when it's done really well, I do enjoy it, where you're basically rooting for the bad guy to get away with it, especially if the bad guy is the POV main character. Okay, the seventh twist that I really love in thrillers is when there's just a bonkers motive for the thing. Like, it's really, it's out there. It's usually possibly sociopathic, but it's so deliciously bonkers that I love it obviously doesn't work all the time. There's a very thin line between the insanely soapy ending that doesn't work and this, where I'm just like, that is really bonkers. Props. Uh, it's, it's rare, but I really like it when it happens because then I'm just impressed with the thing around which the whole book is built because it's such an out there and yet usually airtight logic reason that someone did something. And most often, whatever that thing is, it's very chilling. It's the kind of end twist that leaves like a coldness in your bones because you're like, huh, I like those. So the eighth twist that I like, again, only works if it's done very well. Oh God, the author has to have like a very careful hand with this one. But I think we all like this one, which is the person you least expect did it so hard to pull off and specifically some of the ones that I'm thinking of and by least expected I'm thinking of like children or like sweet old grannies like the kind of character archetypes who we would never suspect in real life either because generally they don't murder people or like the sweet housewife it's really hard to pull this one off often it is pulled off in conjunction with that justified killer thing or justified bad guy thing where it's the person you least expect but they have like a really good reason and you actually are rooting for them to get away with it those often go together i just like these twists when they're done well because when they're done well, it's an author really subverting your expectations and often kind of making you think, really think about things in our lives and societies, etc. Okay, so the ninth twist that I, I secretly love, and I know some people hate this, and in fairness, there's some books where I'm like, if the author does this, I will find them and hurt them. But every once in a while, I love it when the love interest did it. This is that trope where your main character is usually working on the investigation with another character and the b-plot is romance. Sometimes it's like the hunky cop who like they team together or it's like that guy from work or what have you. Every once in a while I love it when it turns out that person is the bad guy. Oh, because it just, it messes with all of your emotions. You really trusted them. I guess this feeds into the other one I really like where the person has inserted themselves into their life. It's a matter of the reader feeling as betrayed as the character and it's just the ultimate gut punch. And so every once in a while, I want that ending. Sometimes though, if I ship it really hard, I'll get mad. But I, I kind of like that subversion of expectations when it's like, the love interest did it. All right, so the 10th twist I really, really love when it's done well is the final gut punch twist. This is usually after the big climax, after all the stuff has gone down, and it's at the very end of the book when the author gives you one last twist that is kind of cold and horrifying and leaves the book on a sour note, but in a chilling kind of way. I've read a few recently that I hesitate to give as examples because it'll ruin them. I'm thinking of examples where it's like, yes, you solved it, but there was this other piece and it's worse than you thought. It's kind of those final gut punches that tend to have to do with things that we'll have knee-jerk reactions to, someone tragically dying, awful things in childhood, the person you trust the most not actually being trustworthy. Ugh, it's hard to give examples, but we can all think of a book that had that final, final twist right at the end that just gave us chills. And when a book does that well, I love it. It's the kind of thing that sticks with you where you're feeling unsettled about that book that you read for several days afterward. So those are the twists that I really, really love with the disclaimer on all of them when they're done well. And a lot of the 
twists that I don't love are about when things aren't done quite as well, though some of these are just hard passes. But the first one is the reverse of my favorite thing, the secret sociopath, least favorite, sudden sociopath. This is where you get a twist at the end where, haha, they're a sociopath, but it comes out of nowhere and there's literally nothing before. No adequate foreshadowing to make that character twist work. Really don't like it because then it's just using the idea of a sociopathic character as kind of, well, literally just a twist as a bugaboo rather than a smart and deliberate character choice that is layered throughout the book. This especially bugs me because, you know, you're always trying to logic together the twists in a book. It especially bugs me when you think back on that character, kind of how they're depicted in the book and their life situation, and they're in a situation where it would be almost impossible for them to hide that they were a sociopath for that length of time. There's one specifically I can think of, if you've watched my wrap-up videos, you know, might know what it is, but I won't spoil the title of the book here. It was one where it turned out the husband was a secret sociopath, or a sudden sociopath in this case, the whole time, but the main character was his wife, had been with him for like 15, 20 years, they had multiple children together, he's described as an excellent dad, and the thing is it's not that sociopaths can't be okay parents, but there was no hint at anything that actually go with a sociopathic personality, and so it felt a little bit unearned for me. I digress. The second twist, I really don't like in thrillers. This is really just a cop-out. It's when, toward the end of the book, a character has vital information that cracks the whole thing open, but they've been there the entire time and they just were too chicken to say something or just didn't feel like it. And basically the reasoning behind why this vital piece of information was kept for a significant amount of time just doesn't hold together. The third thing is when POV narrative trickery is done poorly. <laughs> a lot of people really hate this trope slash twist where midway through you find out the POV you thought you were reading is actually something else. And when it is done poorly or it's too obvious, I too do not like it. I don't like this when it's used as a gimmick. And especially when you're looking for it or it's used, I, I find most when I kind of am eh about it is when it's used in combination with dissociative identity disorder, just because it's such a well-trodden trope. So for the POV trickery to work, it has to be pretty clever and essentially subvert its own trope, much like Gone Girl did. So the fourth twist that I just don't really like, I mean, these feel so basic, and that is when the most obvious person ever is the bad guy. Essentially when the bad guy is so clearly telegraphed from the very beginning, and then often this goes in combination with weaker red herrings, that as a reader you're just shouting at the book the entire time, you're shouting at the main character. It's that guy, obviously. Essentially I don't like it when you go into the beginning of the book and you almost immediately figure out <laughs> the twist of the book. It's just a real bummer, as is the fifth twist that I don't really like, which is when the bad guy comes out of no nowhere, you get to the end and it's like, it was that guy! And you're like, who? Either they really weren't present in the narrative before, they were such a minor character that they were mentioned once in like chapter three and you're expected to remember them, or it's someone who was there, but it's like him? I've actually had some situations where I'm reading a book and I get to the ending and I become convinced that the who done it was changed during editing because other clues were so well kind of put together, but then it ended up being that guy. So I always wonder if the reason it comes out of nowhere is because it was a later stage narrative change, but we'll never know. Ultimately, the thing in a thriller is that it's all about foreshadowing and setup and tension and red herrings. And when any of that is done poorly, it leads to a twist that just isn't going to work for me. Or really any of us, I would assume. Who likes any of these things? All right, the sixth one might actually be more specific to me. I really don't like the twist in thrillers where it turns out to be the overly psychotic woman who did it because of a man. I'm specifically thinking of those huge overblown endings where she goes full fatal attraction. Bunny, broiler, like irrational to the max of like, I love you, you can only be with me, must murder everyone. It just tends to often be a little bit over the top. While there are psychotic women and men, we are equal opportunist. 
I find that that trope twist doesn't usually work for me. Maybe because I just can't, I can't get my emotions to that level. Generally because I don't like it, but also very often for this to work and for the author to hide it, that character can't be psychotic the whole book and very often the twist can feel like it comes out of nowhere. They go zero to 60 from like decently normal lady to crazy and it usually just really doesn't work for me. Okay, the seventh twist I don't like, which kind of ties into something I said a little bit earlier, is when you get to the ending and you get to the twist and it's all well and good, it works. But the author has led other threads dangling and it means that either they haven't closed the gap on a couple of red herrings or a major red herring, i.e. given the, you, the reader, that logical piece to explain, oh, this is why it wasn't that person or it is what those cases when I suspect that the whodunit was changed late in editing and what happens is those very good threads that you as a reader have been following that logically line up to explain why character A did it, not character D, it's essentially a bad edit and it drives me crazy when the very clear thread is present and just falls to nothing. Most often what happens is that character just disappears in act three because they've been edited out of the book but the threads that led up to it, it's never explained why we should discount that character if that is indeed a red herring. Basically, I'm left with the what if of the book where yes, the solution presented is perfectly fine, but the alternative solution haunts me forever because it's not resolved. Okay, my eighth least favorite twist is kind of the opposite of my 10th favorite twist. A lot of these are kind of like, they're twins, they're symbiotic. I like it when it's done in one way and I don't like it when it's done in another. And that is the final twist for twist's sake. When the author is really pushing it in terms of like, I need a final crazy thing to happen, the best book I can think of, and this doesn't spoil anything except that it does have a final twist, is Sometimes I Lie. It has a final twist that was so, it was honestly confusing. Very often that's what happens with that final big twist. They want to throw something crazy at your face but it often will go against the logic of the ending that you've already read because you can't actually draw out a final twist without it ruining the final twist. So for me, there's a difference between the final gut punch that is unsettling and the final twist that is unsettling for a very different reason. It's unsettling because you turn your head and go, what? Don't like those. I don't, does anyone like those? Ultimately, if you can't tell for me, my favorite twists tend to be based on tropes and I love them when they're done well and my least favorite twists are in most cases the opposite of those things and I just don't like things that aren't done well. For me, ultimately, almost anything can work if it is done well with a couple of exceptions. So I'm wondering what about you guys? What are your favorite types of twists and what are your least favorite types of twists? The ones that are gonna make you shut your book or your Kindle and throw it against the wall because you're like, why? Let's talk about our favorite and least favorite thriller twists. And give this video a thumbs up if you like it. I will make more bookish content. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. I post new videos two to three times a week. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and happy reading.